Hi, I'm David Gerard, and this is Pivot to AI. Today, an acclaimed paper on AI that it turns out wasn't quite right. In a fast-moving field, especially anything like AI, which is buzzwordy and has a lot of dumb money flying around, researchers don't want to sit around waiting for the peer review process to get back to them when they could just post their first version on a blog or on the archive. These preprints are just the status of something someone posted, but they can have high impact. Let's take the preprint paper, Artificial Intelligence, Scientific Discovery and Product Innovation, which was posted to archive by MIT economics PhD student Aidan Toner Rogers in December 2024. He looked at AI in chemistry and materials science. Discovering a new substance that works to do a particular job is a long process of trial and error. Tona Rogers told the story of a thousand or more material science researchers at an unnamed company who used a machine learning system to generate possible new materials, and how they found 44% more new materials. Patent filings went up 39%, and new product prototypes went up 17%. Incredible! though Tona Rogers did say the scientists felt alienated from their work. The paper exploded. Economists loved it. More importantly, the paper told the AI promoters what they wanted to hear. The bosses didn't care about the disgruntled workers, but they do really want more output. Google Scholar lists 50 citations already, mostly from preprints, but a few from papers that passed peer review. Tona Rogers submitted the paper to the Quarterly Journal of Economics. Darren Asimoglu, who won an Economics Nobel in 2024, and David Orta, both from MIT Economics, they promoted the paper widely. It's fantastic, Asimoglu told the Wall Street Journal. I was floored, said Orta. Unfortunately. MIT is trying very hard not to say the word fraud, but has asked Archive to withdraw the paper. MIT has no confidence in the provenance reliability or validity of the data and has no confidence in the veracity of the research contained in the paper. MIT also speaks of, quote, misconduct, unquote. Goodness me. A lot of the graphs in the paper were just too perfect. You don't see data this clean in the real world. This was a surprising data set I want to look a bit more closely at. MIT started investigating the paper in February. They were prompted by Asimoglu and Orta, because a computer scientist who knew materials science had a word with them in January, after the Wall Street Journal article. And they said this paper threw up a lot of red flags for a chemist. And publicly embarrassing the Nobel economist who talked you up is probably not a great career move. Robert Palgrave, a chemist and materials scientist at University College London, goes through a pile of the things about the paper that struck him as not quite right both in December 2024 and just recently. The original paper was too good to be true in many ways. How could a second-year PhD student get pervasive access to extremely sensitive data from what must have been a multi-billion dollar company? How could such a study have been set up years before this student started his work PhD in just the right way to deliver results to him? What company really has 1,000 scientists all trying to discover new materials all day, every day. It didn't really make sense as a concept. But there were technical points too. AI, using atomistic methods like density functional theory, cannot predict most of the types of materials that were supposedly studied. It can only really work for simple crystalline materials. Glasses, biomaterials, no chance. There were maybe three or four companies in the world that were even large enough to have enough material scientists to do this study. Say, 3M or Corning, someone like that. Coincidentally, there was an internet domain name dispute. Tona Rogers registered the name CorningResearch.com in January 2025, just after the paper came out. And the actual Corning saw this and filed the dispute, and they were given the name. So... This is bad. What do we do about attacks on science like this? Science assumes good faith. The usual issue is sloppy work, not straight-up data fraud. But basic checking can't wait for the bubble. 
the big money in AI, what stuff it can call science, to back up its claims of AI magic, and it doesn't want to wait around for the peer review process. Peer review can let through a lot of garbage, but at least someone outside your lab has checked the amazing claimed result. The real trouble is that peer review journals aren't where the news happens these days. The news is in preprints on archive, promoted by a tweet. AI companies routinely just put a post up on the archive, or even just on their own site, and everyone calls that the paper, and it never goes to a journal. Anthropic are particular offenders here, where they put a promotional PDF on their site, then they call their good friends at Time magazine to tell them they've dropped some absolutely solid new science. But Google DeepMind really got the ball rolling in AI on not bothering with the peer review step where someone outside checks your work. It would be nice if the press kept in mind that even though it's overwhelmingly honest researchers just putting their stuff up in good faith, a lot of it is super interesting and even useful, but it's just an unreviewed blog post and you've got to treat it like it's an unreviewed blog post. Even peer review does not catch intentional fraud until someone sees a result that's a bit too perfect and goes, wait a minute. So if it sounds too good to be true, look a bit closer. Thanks for tuning in to Pivot to AI, coming to you daily. Please tell just one other person about this episode. Please do like and subscribe on YouTube, leave a review on the podcast apps, and you can fund my work at the Patreon in the show notes. So thank you all, see you tomorrow, and bye for now.